hello everyone this is the uh, march edition of the seditionist uh, it's been a little while uh, keith and i have been rather busy uh, doing our other jobs our, our real real jobs um but we certainly have had a lot of time to uh, consider some topics and some themes and uh, we're very anxious and ready to to get back into that uh, debate mode um one thing that, that we wanted to talk about we wanted to strike a chord today is on uh, video games and as as someone who has a boy in middle school another one in elementary school you know video games is definitely a part of our daily lives um, and 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 just recently I had an opportunity to talk with a, a company called Ubisoft and they joined up with with another power organization called VH1 save the music and together uh, they were doing some pretty magical things up in the New York area um, and it started to make me think about uh, Ubisoft and other video games. Um, and the first one that came to mind was this video game called Just Dance. Now, that's sort of a, a no-brainer. You know, it's fun. It's great for kids. Why not let them, you know, play a video game, getting some physical fitness and kinesthetic movement and all that kind of stuff? But I, I, I think there's more to it than just that surface, obvious type of, uh, kinesthetic video game. Uh, you know, Keith and I talk a lot about individualized uh, instruction, and we really have to take that to the nth degree. So, so, so let's think about this for a second. If you've got a kid who, say, you know, is heading off to the military, um, is there a place for a video game that you know traditional people may call violent, um, but it, it 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 builds on strategy and 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 working as a team in that type of environment um just how far could this concept go uh keith you know it's interesting that you mentioned that i love that you use ubisoft as an example because they're a great publisher of some terrific titles uh, assassin's creed just one of them um, that's some really good stuff and to take the first person shooter concept and drill down into that for a second we know that for example that the united states army does in fact now get involved in the in the design of uh, FPS games, traditionally called first-person shooters, um, and and you immediately get a backlash from people who say, "Oh, it's violent! It's violent." There was a study, and I can't quote it off the top of my head, but it was probably three four years ago, in which um, clinical surgeons surgeons in in the, in the medical setting, um, when they played first-person shooters for a series of time a, a period of time before they performed their surgeries, they actually had a less incident rate of accidents and a higher success rate in their surgeries. Why is this? Well, it's of course, it's hand-eye coordination, no shock there. It's activating parts of the brain for problem solving, being aware, problem solving, critical thinking that might not have been activated had they not played the game. That alone has some significant ramifications for what we may wanna be doing in schools. Um, to take that platform and, and move away from the violence aspect, there's a, a series of games called Portal which instead of having a gun that you shoot, you have a little weapon that, that you point it at a wall and it creates a doorway. And you point it in another direction, it creates another doorway that they're now linked. So you can go through one and out the other. The entire platforming game, it uses a first person shooting engine, but is exclusively about problem solving. So there are ways to harness the powers of these technologies while addressing some of the concerns that violence you know, might be involved, but I think that we can also mitigate those in a few other ways. I'm interested to hear about this Ubisoft partnership. Yeah, the, um, and, and here's one other thing about the first person shooter, and I understand it's gonna be very hard for us to get beyond the idea of violence. Um, that, could be, that could be a hard one, but you know, drastic times may call for drastic measures. Um, because one of the other things that I find interesting about the whole idea of first person shooters um, is that you are having to make these quick decisions, but it's all under pressure, and and I think like with with your with your idea of the surgeon, you know, you have to make those decisions under that under that realm of pressure, and we we try to avoid pressure, obviously, with our kids. We don't want them to feel under that pressure, but at some point in time, if we're going to individualize instruction, and we know this child is going to be in an occupation that is always under pressure. We've got to harness the technology that's out there to do that. Um, so, so, so even though I understand the idea of the violence, but we've got to get beyond some of that maybe and look at things like Portal that could still use that concept and apply the, the mental pressure of still having to make quick decisions. 
Um, and you mentioned Assassin's Creed, one of my favorites. Awesome. And um, not only is it a great storyline, but the historical aspect of it. That's a huge part cool. of it. You're right. Uh, yeah. So so that that in and of itself is, is pretty awesome, too, when it comes to uh, literally immersing yourself into these 3D historical worlds that are historically accurate, at least parts of it, if not all of it. Uh, go ahead, Keith. Like you you know, a a couple of things fly immediately to mind. You're working backwards. You're exactly right. That there's a huge historical element. And those people who aren't aware of Assassin's Creed don't recognize that there are ki kids who are getting excited about periods of history that have been challenging for us to engage them with because of these games. They're naturally invested because they've been immersed in the world. Um, I had a situation many, many years ago in which we had a World War II veteran who was doing some speaking and he had a tradition of coming in talking about his experiences on D-Day. And one year he couldn't come and people were very disappointed. Long story short, we used Medal of Honor to recreate the landing at Normandy Beach. It's a historic recreation. And Medal of Honor is, it's quote unquote like violent because there's gunfire, but it doesn't do gore and graphic stuff. So we were able to mitigate it a little. But on that topic, I want to make sure that we mention for our learners out there that while there have been examples shown of a correlating relationship between video game violence and violent behavior, there is no evidence, no evidence of a causal relationship. So while a kid may say, oh, he played a violent game and then did a violent thing, those were predispositions. There is no causal evidence to show that playing video games makes a person more violent. So we can eschew that right off the bat. But, that you really nailed what I think is probably the cornerstone of playing these sort of games is the ability to fail safely. Like you can literally get killed in one of these games. Your character could, you know, expire, but you do it again, right? You can fail safely. And you're exactly right. It lends itself naturally towards the idea of being experiencing a form of authentic pressure, but not where we're bullying a kid into toughening up. We hate that. And Alice Miller's work says we shouldn't be toughening up kids. But to put them in a situation where they want to experience failure, right? They're enjoying playing the game. I think it adds that level of problem solving and criticality in a way that they buy into. So we go right to where they live and go to where your son is rather than forcing your son into the modality of, let's say, you know, a high stakes corporate world or a factory situation. We want to do what's appropriate developmentally for kids. Absolutely. Well, well, well said. The, um, the, the other interesting part about that is um, I don't know how many people we have that, that watch our, our, our video blog, but, but, but I know we're getting into the hundreds last time I checked. Um, and, and, and I would love to put a challenge out there. You know, you know, it's a challenge. What was that? One of those <laughs> movies, challenge. Um, I'd like to put a challenge out there to, to one of those video game companies to, to create something like what we're referring to. Take the Assassin's Creed, take the Medal of Honor, take Portal, and, and create something for us that that doesn't have the gore because it's not necessary. I mean, yeah, it sells, but it's not necessary. Look at it from an historical slash problem solving slash twenty first century soft skill development, and create a game for us, for something that that is specifically for educators. That's that's just as as cool as everything else that's out there right now. Maybe tone down the gore. But you could still keep some of the violence because some of that might be realistic and make something for us. Wouldn't that be a really I mean, I think the first company that does that's gonna be is gonna put themselves on the map. What do you think? I agree. I agree. You know, there, there are some, are some platforms, platforms like let's say um, Unity, which my colleague Mecklenburg down in Franklin County, Virginia, does a lot with. Um, and there are there are certainly platforms out there where people can build their own content. But there, as I've told Bill, that it's not exactly intuitive and you have to know a little coding. And that's cool. We can differentiate for the kids who are able to do that. But you're you're so on the money here. If a company would come out with the ability for us to basically customize and deliver content through an authentic gaming platform that actually worked. Not like it technically worked, but that kids loved and could buy into. Can you imagine an educational MMORPG, like a really good one? There are some, but they're just scooting around the outside, but a really at scale with a big company behind it like Sony or Blizzard. Oh my God, it would transform things. So I think you're right, and I'd love to see somebody rise to that challenge. All right, since since you and I are Ubisoft fans, 
I, I play their their games, uh, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, and uh -huh. they've got a couple other good ones. So we're calling you out, Ubisoft. Let's see <laughs> if you out there to uh, to make something for us. Um, so I, I think that's it for for this particular topic. And um, uh, thank you very much. And Keith, why don't you uh, give them a clue as to what we're going to be doing here in the fall? Outstanding. That's right. We are now officially able to say we've been uh, teaming up with Heather Askey for a while. Um, she's uh, one of the directors for instructional technology down at UVA Wise. And in October, I believe it's October 21st, um, your seditionists, both Rob and I, will be uh, co-keynoting with Dr. Steve Staples, who is the Virginia Superintendent for Instruction for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, and we're going to be tackling uh, revolutionizing schools right on topic. Um, we'll be presenting that as the keynote at the Southwest Virginia Leadership Conference, which is a major educational leadership conference held annual at UVA Wise. So stay tuned for more details. Thank you, everybody. And this, for the seditionists, Keith and I uh, have a great day and keep on keeping on. Thank you. <laughs>